Waters and Stanton, we stock a wide range of antenna traps. But what is an antenna trap? And how can it be used in your station to enhance your performance? Hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters. My ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. I'm glad you could join me. I've entitled this video Traps and Small Gardens and it's primarily aimed at beginners. Now what's the connection between a trap and a small garden? Well, I shall explain that a bit later. But first of all, I'm sure a lot of you want to know what is an antenna trap? How does it work? How do I make one? How do I get one? So let's first of all talk about the trap, the antenna trap, and let me show you how it works. So I'm going to put a couple of small drawings up on the screen now. On the screen now you'll see a drawing of a couple of tuned circuits. If you've studied radio theory you're probably familiar with tuned circuits. If we look at the left, we've got what we call a series tuned circuit. Now the series tuned circuit has the ability to just pass a single frequency through it. It'll reject all other frequencies apart from the resonant frequency. Now that capacitor and that inductance in series forms a resonant frequency, a resonant circuit. And at resonance, that circuit will pass radio signals or past data or whatever you like to um, feed into it. But it will only do that at one frequency. Now if you look on the right hand side of the page you'll see what we call a parallel tuned circuit. It uses the same components, a capacitor and inductance, but this time they're connected in parallel. When they're connected in parallel they will stop a certain frequency, the resonant frequency to which they're tuned will be blocked. It'll let everything else go through apart from the resonant frequency. The resonant frequency will be blocked. We could almost regard it as a, an insulator, an antenna insulator at that particular frequency. Now it's not a perfect insulator but it's pretty good and as far as antenna operation is concerned, we can regard that tune trap as an insulator that only works at one frequency, the resonant frequency of that tune circuit. That parallel tune circuit, we can call a trap in antenna terms. It's an antenna trap. It traps a frequency. It blocks a certain frequency. So now let's see how we can use that in antennas. For this example, I'm going to use a 14 megahertz dipole. Now I've put a dipole up on the screen here. It's a 14 megahertz dipole, and uh, most of you will be familiar with the dipole. Basically, it's a half wave um, element broken in the middle and fed with coax cable. And at either end is an inch laser, and that's just to isolate the end of the antenna from whatever. Uh, is connected to it and supporting it. So a basic 40 megahertz dipole and it works happily on 20 meters giving you good DX and giving you good reception but it only operates on one frequency. So it's great for the frequency on which it operates but it's not so good if you want to operate on other frequencies. Now I could remove those insulators and replace them with 14 megahertz parallel traps. Because as we've just discussed, a parallel trap at a resonant frequency acts almost like an insulator. So let's suppose that we remove those insulators and repl replace them with two 14 megahertz traps. The antenna will work basically the same as it did before. We haven't achieved much yet, but Here's the interesting bit. On the screen now, you'll see the 14 megahertz dipole and the parallel traps at either end. And then beyond those parallel traps at each end is an extra bit of wire. And if we adjust that bit of wire 
to the correct length. We can then resonate the whole system on 7 MHz, 40 meters. Now we've got an antenna that works on two bands. When we feed it with 20 meter or 40 MHz energy, it acts as a conventional dipole and those traps act as insulators. But if we feed it with 7 MHz or 40 meter, 40 meter energy, those traps pass that energy through and allow it to resonate on 40 meters. So we've got a two band antenna. Now something else also happens which is quite interesting and this is where the small garden comes in. When you add a trap to an antenna, not only does it allow you to operate on another band, but it tends to what we call load the antenna. It actually shortens the antenna because that trap, when it's not trapping 40 megahertz, but passing energy through, it has an inductance value. It's a loading coil and therefore it shortens the antenna. So not only have we got an antenna which covers two bands, we've now got an antenna which on 40 meters is somewhat shorter than it would otherwise be. Good news for those with small gardens. Now I can, I can understand or imagine getting questions about, okay, well, how much shorter is it? Well, it's difficult to give an indication, an exact indication of that because it really depends on the value of that trap. It de depends on the inductance and the capacitance of that trap. But roughly, and I only roughly, I would estimate that that antenna, instead of being 20 meters long, will be something like 16 meters long. So you've got a reduction in size. So you've got an antenna which covers 20 meters and 40 meters. And on the 40 meter band, your antenna would normally be 20 meters long. But in this case, it's reduced to around about 16 meters. There's not an easy way of calculating the precise length beyond those traps. It's unfortunately a bit of cut and try. So is it easy to do? Well, yes, it is. First of all, resonate your antenna on 20 meters and make sure that it's, you've got a low VSWR on 10 to 20 meters. And there's plenty of calculations or plenty of uh, uh, measurements on the uh, uh, internet telling you what the resonant frequency um, or what the length are of an antenna is for 14 megahertz. So you get that antenna working properly. Then add the traps and then add additional wire. And when you add to the additional wire, you have to take a rough guess at what it should be. It's, it's worth making it longer than you'd expect. Check the VSWR um, and then adjust the length of the antenna beyond those traps to um, either go higher or lower in frequency. Remember that if you want to lower the frequency of an antenna, you've got to lengthen it. That's why it's better to put a bit more wire than you expect on, because it's much easier to shorten it. If you want to raise the frequency of an antenna, you shorten the antenna. Now, before we get onto the traps themselves, you can add further traps. So we, we in this case, on our dual band antenna, we've got a 20 meter trap. The 20 meter trap um, traps the energy on the basic dipole but passes energy through on other frequencies so we've got an antenna there which covers 20 meters and 40 meters we could add a pair of 40 meter traps um, at the end of that antenna and then add more wire to resonate it on 80 meters so we could have a trap dipole that covers 20 40 and 80 and remember that when we add a trap, we also reduce the length of the next lower frequency. So in other words, we've got an antenna that covers 20 meters and 40 meters, and we know that the 40 meter length is a bit less than what it would normally be because you've got a trap. If we add the 40 meter traps so that we can then add wire to resonate it on 80 meters, those 40 meter traps will actually reduce the length of what would be required normally for an 80 meter antenna. So an 80 meter antenna would normally be 40 meters, but with the inductance of both the 20 meter trap and the 40 meter trap, 
we reduce the length of the antenna significantly. I can't tell you what the exact length would be, but we could be talking around about 30 meters, give or take. So you see, a trap antenna does have distinct advantages for the small garden. And as with other antennas, you can always bend the antenna to fit the garden. We've talked about advantages so far, and I know what you're thinking. There's got to be some disadvantages. Well, yes, there are. When you build an antenna with traps, the basic, the highest frequency, in this case 20 meters, is not affected. That acts as a dipole in the normal way, no problems. When you add those 20 meter traps and extend it so that it operates also on 40 meters, not only do you reduce the overall length of the antenna from what it would be, but you also reduce the bandwidth. Now that's the, that's the downside of traps, that they reduce the bandwidth of the antenna on the lower frequencies. It's not a massive reduction, but it is a reduction. But it's one of those things that you have to accept. I suppose if we regard a full-size 40 meter antenna um, as having a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz, then if we add the traps to it, as we've done this dual band antenna, then probably the bandwidth is going to be around about 150 kilohertz at the two to one point. But that's not a major problem. And if you've got a built-in antenna tuner in your transceiver, that slightly higher VSWR at the band edges will be taken care of anyway. So it's not, not a great problem. Losses. Well, there are losses in traps, but those losses really are very difficult to measure. And the fact that trapped antennas have been so popular over tens and tens of years, trapped dipoles, trapped yagis, trapped verticals, is testament to the fact that any loss is pretty minimal and it has it is outweighed by the advantages that you can have a, a single antenna covering a number of bands that's got to be a, a good thing again for the small garden so where do you get these traps from well we do sell traps on our websites and i've put up a uh, illustration here of one of the traps. We do traps for all the HF bands. I've put up a, an example of a trap here. These particular traps are made in Germany and they're very good quality. They're totally weather sealed. Uh, they're not overly expensive and they are pre-tuned and you know that they're resonant. If you want to make your own traps, you can do. You could wind yourself a coil and get yourself a capacitor, except that capacitor has to handle a high voltage. One of the popular ways of doing it, and I'm not going to describe it here, but there are plenty of examples on the internet, is that you wind a coil and then for the capacitor, you use a length of coax cable. The outer sheath goes on one end of the coil and the inner conductor goes on the other end of the coil. The coax at the far end is left open circuit and it's the capacity between the inner and the outer conductor which acts as the capacitor. Good thing about that, well two things, are good thing, two things are good about that. First of all, it will handle a high voltage, which is great. And secondly, it's very easy to adjust the capacitance by just snipping it off. Now, you will need some means of measuring the frequency or the resonant frequency of that trap, and I have done a little video on that. And you can use an antenna analyzer and a small coupling coil. But if you look on the uh, video site here, you'll see uh, details of how to do it. It's very simple. But of course, you've got, then got to weatherproof it. Um, you may decide that if you just want a, a, uh, an antenna that covers two bands, then you might want to just purchase the traps. If you want to make your own, great. It's great fun. Not difficult to do and it's not expensive. You just need some wire, little coil former. Coil formers? Well, go down to B&Q and get yourself a bit of plastic pipe or a plastic pipe joiner. Um, and coax cable will provide the capacitor. So it's all pretty simple. There are, of course, commercially uh, made trapped dipoles and trapped verticals. In fact, trapped verticals are very popular. So if you look on our website, you'll see a variety of uh, trapped verticals. 
And I think the Hustler ones are very popular because um, they are self-supporting. You've got a single vertical antenna which covers four or five bands. Self-supporting, no, uh, no guys needed, just need to add some radials. But that's a different subject. So in summary, a trap will allow you to operate the antenna on more than one band. It will reduce the bandwidth to some degree. The losses are negligible, but the good thing, particularly for a small garden, is that it actually makes the antenna physically smaller than it would otherwise be. So there we are. That's trapped antennas and small gardens. Now I have skipped through this at a rate of knots, I know, but I hope that I've covered it enough for you to grasp the, an the, the the idea of how a trapped antenna works and perhaps give you some ideas of what you can do in your garden and maybe make your own traps and see how you get on. It's not complicated, uh, you can't do any damage and it's great fun. And of course at the moment, shooting this video now at the beginning of June, you've got several months of good weather out there. <laughs> what, in the UK? Well, You've got several months where there will be some good weather. There we are. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. And it's been great talking to you. Great to have you viewing this channel. And we'll meet again very soon, I'm sure. Take care. Bye for now.